And so consequently, even blacks who earn the same amount of money as whites generally have much less net wealth. You know who's come out the best under affirmative action? White women. It's really white women who've benefited the most from affirmative action. And the thing that I say is that, look, see the skin color? That's my personal cradle to crave affirmative action. And no matter what kind of a hardship, whatever I may have to face, as long as I've got this white skin, it gives me such a huge leg up over anybody else who is of color that it's just incredible. Since blacks were kept out of, through redlining, neighborhoods where you could buy homes that accrued in value dramatically over the years, whites benefited from federal policy that allows you to deduct the interest off of a home mortgage. And that's why 75% of all white people own their at least one home, and only 48% of all blacks do. Why is that? Is it because black people don't want to buy homes? No, it's because of redlining, discrimination by realtors. You're talking about discrimination at banks and savings and loans, where we come in and don't have the same credit profile as a white person, but be denied a loan at twice the rate of a similarly qualified white person. So when you have those barriers of structural discrimination, it is hard to overcome that massive amount of, de of deficits, of inequality. So there's no fair competition. The Africans were part of the trade. I mean, they they sold each themselves. other. The English, uh, I'm sure the Spanish and other nations Blacks were involved too. Slaves. Africans are part of the trade. They even sold each other. Blacks owned slaves right in this country. Africans participated too. Sure they did. That's a part of what those who enslave and those who uh, colonize, that's a part of what they do. They bring other members of the oppressed or the enslaved race into their program. But I don't think anybody would argue that Jews participated in some of that Nazi stuff. Are we going to now say, you know, but Jews partic participated and let's not give them anything? Come on, that's, that the argument doesn't hold water. Some white Americans say that slavery couldn't have been all that bad because there were few examples of several thousand slaves who were actually owned by African Americans prior to the Civil War. Technically, that's true, but you have to ask yourself why that was. If slavery was the legal state of affairs in a state where a freed black happened to live, then frequently to ensure if he had been freed by his master when the master had died, but his wife or children were owned by another master, the only way he could get his wife and children out of slavery was to buy his wife and children. And so there are many cases where uh, black men purchased their wives and technically owned them, but only because the state itself made it impossible to keep fam black families together if one partner happened to be free and the other partner happened to be a slave. So it's a simple explanation. Reparation is only going to divide the races even more. It's just going we to create more chaos. We should look forward and not point fingers backward. Because a particular act is going to create tension should not prevent us or discourage us from the act. The question becomes, is the act right? That's the question, not what the response is going to be. You, you do that later. Uh, if we had worried about divisiveness, I mean, America would, well, let's face it, we'd still be in slavery. I mean, slavery was a divisive issue. <laughs> it tore the country apart, right? So now you're saying after all these years, this late date in history, something is going to be divisive? Come on. Again, I, I may point to some other people who received reparation. It was divisive for the Jews. It was divisive for the Native Americans. There were people who said we ought not to do it. No, I don't think that that argument holds water either. This was a historical wrong that had never really been addressed. 
And when President Lincoln talked about binding up the nation's wounds, he was not addressing the issue of reparations for slaves, uh, former slaves. And so I just felt, and I still feel, that this is a, it's a wound that has not fully been addressed. And I don't think that the real potential of this nation can and will be realized until this issue is resolved because a wound that's not healed properly remains a wound. And uh, I realize that uh, we've had many uh, public officials talk about we want to move forward, but does not address the issue of, of slavery. And I just think that's just something that uh, we must address. I say we need to, they need to pay us reparations so we can heal the soul of America. That's what reparations will do. It will heal the soul of America. It is a defining issue for the 21st century. Just like W.E.B. Du Bois said that the race was the issue, the color line was the issue for the 20th century, reparations is the defining issue for the 21st century. We do reparations right, this is the beautiful part of it, if we do it right, we can heal the soul of America. Why should I have to pay for something I had nothing to do with? You want me, a taxpayer, to pay taxes? My hard -earned money. I think one of the next steps is for the United States to recognize the culpability, the involvement as a nation, its, its uh, ill effects, its current effects, long-term effects, both socially, psychologically, and economically in terms of the position of black people in society that set us back so far that we are still struggling to try to catch up, but at the same time, we're still psychologically struggling with feeling like rejects in our own country. We don't all want the same things, but we, what we do want is, is justice. And what we have agreed on is that we all want reparations. We, what we need to do now is to, to come together and decide what is the best form of reparations for all Afro descendants, not just any particular group, not just AFRI, what we want, not just what December 12th wants, not just what INCOPER wants, but what is going to be best for all concerned. There'll be a greater, greater appreciation and cooperation around issues in communities if this issue is resolved. It's almost like we don't want to talk about it, and therefore uh, it's not there. But it is there. and so. Uh, I have, over the last years, met with individuals around the country, both black and white, uh, and, and, and I say to them, we have an obligation to resolve in our generation. We should not allow this, this issue to further divide us as a nation or that we leave this to our children and grandchildren to address because it's going to only get progressively worse. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed there until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. The Lord and His Holy Mother, Exit and Mariam, journeyed some 500 miles, crossed the Red Sea, 
passed through Eritrea and finally took refuge in Egypt. The Holy Virgin carrying the Lord Christ rested in many places due to the length of the journey. These places have throughout time transformed into monasteries and holy shrines. Debrecina is one of these places that the Holy Virgin, that the Lord Christ rested.